So what happens when we put a wire inside of a waveguide? So let's, let's imagine that we have a cylindrical uh, waveguide and we stick a conductor down the middle, right? So it has some radius A. Um, what happens is that the TEM waves, so waves where the electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular, both of them, to the, 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 um, the, the X direction, the transverse direction of, of the waveguide, are admissible. Um, so um, we get our kappa is once again going to be omega over C. Um, the waves travel at the speed of light. Um, we get that when we plug this all in, we get basically C times the Z component of the B field is equal to the Y component of the, the E field. And conversely, C times the B component of the Y field is equal to E uh, X component. Minus, minus, because we want to make everybody happy. And um, so we plug in the equations, we get that the DEY by DY plus DEZ by DZ is equal to zero. That's just the divergence of the electric field has to be equal to zero. The divergence of the magnetic field has to be Y by Y plus DEZ by DZ has to also equal to be zero. Um, and then we have the curls have to be equal to zero as well. So we get the curl, so DEZ by DY minus DEY by DZ has to equal zero. And the curl of the magnetic field, DVZ by DY minus DBY dyz has to equal zero. Okay, um, those are the equations. There's nothing new here, nothing fancy. This is basically just a way of traveling down free space as we would regularly understand it. Um, uh, the so. These are the equations you end up with. E naught of your wave equation is going to be some magnitude divided by the radius, one over the, the R component, where the axis is obviously aligned in the center there. And your B field, the constant component there is just going to be E naught over C, one over R, in the phi hat direction. So. Um, and if we take the real part of the complex wave equations, we end up with this. I'm just reading from the book and writing it out. There's, there's really nothing to... Once you see how easy it is, there's, there's nothing much to say about it. It's just that's the way it works. And the B field is equal to E naught over C, the same thing, but in the phi hat direction. So there you go. That's what happens when you get a coaxial transmission line. That's why coaxial cables were used to uh, build the... I remember back in the 90s, uh, we used coaxial cables instead of the um, Ethernet cables. That you, well, it's not really Ethernet cables. It's, uh, uh, I want to say RJ232, but I could be completely wrong there. But uh, we used to use coaxial cables to, to allow waves to travel down. And um, funny little thing is you'd have to put terminators on the things because you didn't want a reflection to go back towards the source. So you had to you had to figure out what frequency everything was and, and make it work. So anyway, great fun, good times. Um, uh, twisted pair. Why does twisted pair work so well? Well, it, it should be fairly obvious why that is. You don't induce an electric. You don't induce a magnetic field because uh, the the curled portion of the one wire is counteracted by the curled portion of the other wire. That's always has the exact opposite current. So that's why the twisted pairs work well. So the magnetic fields and everything like that. Anyway, thanks for your time. Uh, next is chapter 9, which I'll get to probably in the next couple days, because chapter 9 is actually quite fun, even though it's even more complicated than chapter 8 was. So thanks for your time. Bye-bye.